Hello my girls, I am finally back. I'm back from Sweden. I was at the 3D meetup. I had an absolute blast and I can't wait to show you guys what I've seen. But first I want to take a minute to thank my sponsor 3D Prima for this trip who made it possible. I got to hang around them at their headquarters. I got to see their operations. I will be doing a short video on that in the coming days. Make sure you check them out in the video description. They do uh, resell quite a lot of brands of 3D printers, over 70 in fact, and their own filament. Now back to the meetup. It was, it was awesome. It was absolutely awesome. There was so much to see. I have over five hours of footage and I can't fit that all into maybe a 15 minute video. I'll try not to stretch this too much. I'll show you guys the highlights, explain a few things which really caught my eye. And then at the end of it, I'll, uh, I'll put a montage for you guys to enjoy and see what the awesomeness looked like at 3D Meetup in Sweden. Figuring out where to begin at the 3D Meetup Sweden is, is quite a headache because there was so much to see. As always, you had E3D showcasing their tool changer. Now, every time I see that tool changer, it's, it's just a different version of it. They play with it and it just showcases what the tool changer is capable of. They had a setup where you would have a tool head printing something and then you have another tool head which would have a microscope attached to a Raspberry Pi which can check if the print is accurate. Now this was just a showcase, it was just a demo run but imagine going further where you can integrate the slicing parameters and the 2D views of each layer integrate them into Raspberry Pi and the, the, the tool changer would actually be able to detect whether or not something wrong happened during the print. And this is one of the many, many applications that this machine can do. And let's face it, most of this is thanks to the Duet um, board that runs this machine. Obviously Duet were also there next door. They were showcasing also their version of the tool changer. Apart from that, they were also showcasing the Duet Maestro, which is like more like a budget version of the Duet 2 Wi-Fi. They also showed their upcoming Duet 3 beta board, uh, which will feature much more expandability if that was even possible. Well, apparently it is due to a bus system, but I do have a feature video coming up on Duet where I, I let the guys talk about their products uh, in order to showcase exactly what they're capable of. You have the Bontech guys there, which were showcasing obviously their Mark III extruder. Apart from that, they were also showing their upcoming Bontech direct drive for the CR10S. Now this was designed in conjunction with Greg 3 d and it looks absolutely beautiful, it's clean. It prints amazingly well, especially on the flexible. There was this really, really flexible rocket printed in baseboard and the detail was insane and it was just, it was just absolutely awesome to see. I finally got to meet George from MVO Engineering in the UK. Uh, we've chatted for so long. Um, he, he sent me a few things in the past to work with the uh, BCN3D Sigma, the Bontic extruders that I had installed on them, the conversion for E3D hotends on the BCN3D as well. He is now the uh, distributor of the Redbox within EU. So if you guys are into um, getting a Redbox, George is probably the one to speak to. I will leave a link in the video description for him. I also got a chance to speak to the guys at Zaribo or Zaribo, uh, the creators of the Zaribo uh, 3D printers. They were showcasing their three different versions, uh, the 220mm height version, the 320 and the 420. And I have to say that was quite impressive because initially I thought it was just a Mark III or a Mark II upgrade kit like the Bear is, like the Bear upgrade, but it's not. It's a whole machine uh, designed by themselves. Uh, it replicates a lot of the Mark III parts in, in terms of uh, firmware. I think they said they use about 90 or 99% of the Mark III firmware, but that's where it stops. All the parts are redesigned to work with the Zeribo. And we also spoke about doing a live build because it will take about six or eight hours to build one of these things. So I figured I'm gonna give it a go. It's been a while since I did a proper live stream on the channel with a full um, lengthy build. 3D Prima were there, of course, with their massive stand. They had their epic life-size R2-D2 uh, running around and, and sort of beeping at people. 
And then eventually another guy brought his own full life-size R2-D2 and they ended up having this conversation between them, which was absolutely hilarious. And there was so much more. You had once again, the display of the InMove robots, uh, which this year they had legs as well. Um, and I still have to get around to actually starting my InMove robot because I will be doing one. I had a chance to catch up with Sokot Latin, who is the curator of the Marlin Firmer. And I also finally got to meet Gina Hausger, which is the creator of Octoprint. I also got to spend some time with Paris from BL Touch, who was also there uh, giving some speeches about the BL Touch and the progress where, where it came from, where it's at, what the future holds. So it was absolutely awesome to see. 3D Meetup had a, a surprise guest, which was Joseph Prusha. He came by on Sunday for a few hours um, he, he went around, it kind of uplifted everyone's spirits that finally Joe f um, figured out that he really should come to 3D Meetup Sweden because it is much bigger than a lot of people actually think it was. It was busier than last year in terms of numbers. It was much more organized. It felt much more easy flowing. There was so much more to see. So I'm hoping that next year Joe Prusha will actually have a booth at the 3D Sweden Meetup. Now I had the pleasure of choosing the best in show, which was um, anything that I liked, anything that caught my attention. And I had a packet of um, Magic Goo Pro Pack to give away along with one of my t-shirts, some stickers, a spool of 3D Prima filament and one of my keychains. Now choosing the winner wasn't really easy for me. There were two printers which really caught my attention. The first one was a printer I've never seen um, and apparently it's called the Scott Russell mechanism where you have an arm that actually prints um, um, on any plane so it, it was it was just it's kind of hard for me to describe so that hence why I have video to show what it's like but the winner was a, um, a printer by a, a guy named Andre who built this Core XY machine with three core XY axes um, on top of each other. And the, the reason behind is you have the first core XY axis, which holds the hot end. The second one holds the extruder itself. So what you have there is no inertia whatsoever on the head because it's just the hot end on itself and the extruder is on a separate axis. Now on top of that, you have another axis which has a counterweight. So any movement that the head and the extruder do, the counterweight will move in the complete opposite direction and that would keep the machine perfectly balanced. Now it wouldn't, not having this counterbalancing wouldn't affect the print quality in any way. Uh, I will leave a link in the video description to um, a more in-depth explanation about this mechanism and how it came about from Duet. But the fact that you could see machines printing and shaking on the tables and this thing was just flat and it, it just wouldn't move. You also had a glass of water to show how still it is when printing at over 300 millimeters a second. It was insane to watch and I felt that Andre should be the winner of the best in the show. Now that was just a touch, it was just a touch of all the awesomeness that was the 3D meetup in Sweden. It was the second year I've been there. It was better than the first year I was there last year. I really enjoyed myself. I will be going again next year for sure. And I hope that it starts growing to the same scale that Murph is at. So I'm going to leave you with a bit of montage of everything else that I didn't talk about, but which still was worth showing. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications. Thank you to my Patreons. Thank you to 3D Prima. And as always, happy making guys.